When we're programming games, it's very important to be able to detect when two objects collide. In this Space Invaders game, we need to detect when the yellow player's bullet has hit one of the aliens so that we can make it explode. But how do we do this in software? There are lots of different techniques, but in this tutorial we're going to look at the simplest form, bounding box collision detection. So let's look at our Space Invaders game, and then consider bullets travelling up towards the aliens. In bounding box collision detection, we consider each object in our playing screen as being put inside a box, uh, which we call this bounding box. And doing this greatly simplifies our code, as we're now only having to deal with our simple rectangles and squares, and trying to work out when these overlap and therefore collide. So looking at one of these bounding boxes, we need some information about its position and size. Usually we'll use the screen coordinates of the top left and bottom right corners, but really these only need to be any two diagonally opposite corners, as long as we use the same two corners on every object. In our code, we might be using an insertion point and a width and a height, but either way, this will let, still let us work out the screen coordinates of each of these corners. So to detect a collision, we really need to find out when these boxes overlap. So we can start looking at each axis separately. So let's look at our x-axis overlap. So looking at the green and blue boxes, as the blue box starts to move to the left, eventually its left-hand edge will be directly below the right-hand edge of the green box, and if it moves any further then we get this overlap. So labelling the coordinates of the bottom right corner of the green box and the top left corner of the blue box as shown on the screen, we can form our first condition for our boxes to be overlapping. We can then repeat this process for the blue box starting to the left of the green box and then sliding towards the right. And again, at a certain point, the two edges will start to overlap and we will get our second condition for colliding boxes. So if both of these conditions are true, then we know that our boxes overlap left to right. We can then go through the exact same process, again looking at the boxes now in vertical overlap. So with the blue box starting below and moving up, and the blue box starting above and moving down. And this will give us our final two rules for overlapping boxes. So now, if all four of our conditions are met, then we know that the two boxes have actually collided together which in this instance means that the player bullet has now hit the alien. We can demonstrate this then with a simple demo program. So here we've got our green and blue um, squares, and I can move my blue square using my cursor keys. And as I move around it, of course, when nothing happens, until we start getting close to our box then. And eventually, as the boxes touch, we get this hit condition. And there we have our overlapping boxes. And again, we can approach it then from any, any angle or any side. And you can see that as soon as our boxes touch, they overlap and we get our collision. If we have a look at the code for that, um, a lot of this then is just putting together that moving um, boxes. But here we have our collision detection function. So what we're doing is we are sending in two objects, two boxes. So our system then is working out the corner positions. So box one top right is the box coming in's insertion point. We then have to calculate its bottom left position and that's done by it taking its um, X coordinate and adding our width and then our Y coordinate and adding its height. And then we do the same then for our box two. So that gives us then our four corners for our boxes. We can then come down and do our collision detection. Now, when you apply this to your particular system, you do need to check on how your Y axis is handled. So I'm using tick 80 here. 
And for that, the 0, 0 coordinate for the screen positions is in the top left corner. So our x is the same as normal, going positive as we go to the right. But as we come down the screen, our y-axis increases. So we've actually got a reversed y-axis in this situation. So in that idea, we do have to then check on our conditions where we are checking for the y axis um, overlaps. So you can see here that I've actually had to switch my tests round simply because we are um, moving from zero position at the top and then increasing our y axis as we go down the screen. So just make sure you just think about that in your heads and go back to that overlapping uh, boxes um, diagram and you should be able to get it pretty fairly easily. But we then have our four conditions, and we're saying here, if condition 1 and condition 2 and condition 3 and 4 are all met, then we have a collision. And we simply return back this true value. So again, this function um, provides us with collision detection without having to do very much mathematics at all. So we're simply doing a little bit of addition here to work out our coordinates. And then it's really just four comparisons. And that gives us then our bounding box collision detection. And going back into it, you can see then that it is actually very good at detecting these hits. If you want to have a look at this demo program, then I'll put a link to the project page in my website in the description below. The advantages of the bounding box technique are that it is very fast, as you only have to do four comparison operations. There's no actual mathematics going on here. But it does have a disadvantage that you are characters do have to fit inside boxes. If they're very irregularly shaped, you might find that some of the box doesn't actually contain part of your character, so that you will get end up getting um, false hits as missiles hit the blank area in the box. But it's still a very well used technique as it can be used for course collision detection, where you're trying to find out very quickly and with least number of calculations, which objects are close enough to hit together, which you can then go off and use one of the fine-tuned algorithms to actually detect if it's a real hit or not. So bounding box algorithm then, very, very useful in course detection. So the bounding box method then is really the simplest method of working out if two objects have collided together. So please make sure you have a look at my other videos in this series where I'll be looking at techniques such as the bounding ball and also then moving on to actual point inside polygon techniques where we can get a very accurate um, reading of collisions between objects and polygons. So. I'll put some links in the description and on the screen now. Have a look at those and have fun coding. Don't forget to visit the course pages for this project. There you'll be able to download the code for this lesson and get lots of extra hints and tips. You'll also get access to all my other programming, electronics and gaming projects. All the links are in the description below. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.